Hello, my sweet friends and family. Today I want to talk about a word that's very near and dear to my heart, a special word, a word that has been used throughout time and uh, has caused a lot of harm. But it's a useful word when used in the appropriate way because just like any very powerful tool, if used inappropriately, it can fuck shit up. But if used in the right way, if used in a, as a certain way to mold your subjective universe to push your subjective universe into a parts of your subjective universe into a cubby hole that you can then manipulate it is a fantastic word and the word is satan, satan. 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 is the word what a great fucking word this is now this is a word that gets rejected by a great many people religious people atheists alike will reject this word uh, in the East, the word is laughed at, the idea that God is um, split into um, uh, parts or that God, a uh, perfect creative force, fucked up and um, created this miscreant, intelligent force that tempts and torments humanity as a beyond insane it's laughable and silly and stupid and it's kind of funny because it's like clearly the satan is god wearing um a scary mask and so in the east they've got different names for the same chaotic element in the universe that can lead people astray or causes destruction sometimes you know it's called maya which means illusion or mara in buddhism which is the force of death or the force of entropy or even some, even Kali, Shiva's consort, the many-armed goddess that hangs out in graveyards and cuts the heads off saints, you know, the universe has um, got a dark part to it. And, I mean, if you don't believe me, just Google search hyena wallowing in elephant corpse. And I don't know if that's going to lead to the video that I've seen, but there's like a horrific video of a hyena sort of taking a bath in the rotting uh juice filled corpse of a of an elephant and the thing is having a fucking blast it's like a jersey shore hot tub for the hyena it's so happy to be in the putrefaction of a giant beast that's been rotting in the suns in the sun i don't know if africa has more than one sun in the sun of africa now, I'm not saying that. Clearly, that's not Satan. It's a symbol, though. Now, here's the idea. We've got it. We're in the postmodern age. Um, and what that means is w our science has kind of revealed beyond a shadow of a doubt that a lot of the things that people used to believe and, and had the luxury of believing, for example, that there is a magical entity that lives in the sky and he blesses the people that love him and it's a he not a lady it's a he and he wears robes and he's a honky and he sits in a golden throne and if you believe in him then the miserable awful boring plague-ridden shit life of most people uh will be redeemed for an eternity in some kind of beautiful minecraft server that they call heaven now we don't have that luxury anymore and if you do believe that don't fast forward because uh a little bit don't do just keep believing it because it's great it's totally real if you believe it's totally real then you're enjoying a wonder <laughs> that's got to feel good to believe that stuff to really believe that's got to feel good i can remember um being at a, a, a my friend took me to this christian church once and uh it was communion time where they do this thing where they transmute the uh, wafer um, into the flesh of Christ, or they believe that they, it's called transubstantiation is the name of it, and they transmute this little white wafer, this chip, uh, by saying special magical incantations um, over the chip, they transform it into the flesh of God. And they say these magical incantations over wine or grape juice, depending on what sect of Christianity you're in. And, 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 and if you believe, it's transformed into the blood of Jesus Christ. And they believe that. It's not like the way many of us think about that. Like, oh, this is a very nice ceremony that's representative of the fact that anytime we consume calories, we should give thanks to God because everything's the flesh of God. 
they really believe that this magical thing has turned that chip into the, like, I don't know, the skin of Jesus. And this lady handed me the wafer, the communion wafer, and she said, and I looked at her eyes and she said something like, this is my flesh. Speaking for Jesus, of course. And I could see that she really believed it. And I thought, that's pretty fucking cool, man, um, that you've gotten to that point where you really believe that, that place of faith or uh, hypnosis, depending on whether you want to do cup half full or cup half hypnotized. And um, it's an exciting place to be. But for a lot of us, we've gotten, we've got, we've woken up a little bit past that dream and it's really tough to believe it. So this is where we enter into the awesome realm of uh, chaos magic, where there's this sort of understanding that we are in this undulating field of infinite variables and we get to decide how we want to categorize these variables and the categorization of the variables is uh or tools that we use to manipulate the variables to obtain our will and um this is really a cool way to look at it because suddenly all these antiquated old tools you can bring back and one of these antiquated old tools is the word satan lucifer um, the, the, the fucking, um, the, the, the force of darkness in the universe this is a very useful handle, uh, that you can use to, uh, climb out of whatever depressive state that you happen to be in. Because as far as I'm concerned, being depressed, being, being depressed is a truly satanic state. Because, in general, the depression has gone beyond being circumstantial, has gone beyond being a result of stimulus outside of yourself, and is now just a result of some kind of reoccurring, awful cascade that's actually maybe even created um, changes in your neurology in a way that your shit is firing uh, in, in a, in a, that your engines aren't firing appropriately. So you feel tired. You, f you can't get anything done. Anything that you want to get done doesn't get done because you feel so tired and you feel alone and you feel like everything around you is tasteless and empty. And I speak from a place of having been deep in that horrible pit. And I know a lot of you aren't like this, and I hope you don't get annoyed that from time to time I talk about uh, that state and recommend people clean their house and all the, and, and the variety of things I talk about. But I talk about it so much because I, it's one of, it's, pla that, it's plagued my life from time to time. And um, I think it's such an awful fucking what place to get into that I really have a great deal of em empathy for people who are existing in that place right now because I, I know what it's like to be caught in that web. And the, the fascinating thing about that web is, is there really isn't a, that you're the fucking spider in the web of depression. You're the thing that you're the thing that comes clambering down the fucking web and devours itself. That's you. So it's a completely, uh, what's really awesome about the state of depression is that it is uh, the it's it's kind of a gateway, uh, and the gatekeeper is yourself, and the gatekeeper is asking you this incredible riddle in every moment, which is why live, and if you can answer that riddle, the gate will swing open, and you will be allowed out of this this awful net and into the party that is modern life that so many people think is a living and horrific hell. So this is where the Satan word comes in really handy when you're in this fucking awful dungeon of depression because here's a really interesting thing you can do. You will find that when you're depressed, your attention is being grabbed every second by either negative thought patterns or by external hypnotic devices, for example, TV, video games, the internet, or bad people that you shouldn't be around. And 
if you see these variables, if just for fun as a thought experiment, you think to yourself, at this moment, I am in, in a hypnotic trance where I am being distracted by Satan in the form of the various indulgences that I keep going in, going for, it sort of raises the stakes a little bit. Because if you just think, yeah, you know, I'm just going to fucking sit down and play Minecraft for the next five hours, you can almost do it. It still feels like shit. You, you know it sucks. You're sitting there in this sort of decrepit state, smelling your underarms and looking at the this, this cigarette burn in the ashtray and maybe smelling your fucking cat litter box that needs to get changed and looking at the various, like, uh, cum-soaked tissues and the shit scattered all around your house. You know it sucks, but if you think, holy fuck, I am in the intestinal tract of Satan, and these video games and bad people and alcohol and drugs and laziness are the acids that are dissolving my will and have dissolved my will to the point that I can barely move. I'm stuck like one of those mice on those horrific, sadistic, gummy traps that they get stuck on. And I'm just I'm just in the last moments of my life underneath some dark cabinet waiting for someone to throw me into a garbage can or drown me. Suddenly it, it might spark this thing inside of you that makes you decide to fight. Because that's what the fucking trick is, man. This is where it gets fun. Is because suddenly you realize that your life, which up until this point might have just seemed like some kind of empty wandering through the synthetic plastic landscape that is modern life, transform and transforms into a kind of Tolkien-esque battle against the Dark Lord Sauron. You can name it whatever you want, by the way. You don't have to call it Satan. I mean, it's kind of an antiquated term. You can call him Frenchie. You can call him Mr. Trips. Uh, you can call him Lord, um, Lord Darius if you want to. You get to name the fucking thing. But it's fun to personify the negative entropic distraction mechanisms that have arisen in your life and recognize that you are in a sacred battle with Frenchie. And if you win this battle, this wrestling match, this combat session, this fucking mortal battle against this terrific foe, which can transform into so many delightful things, then you will climb out of it a, a warrior. You, will, you can overcome the depression. You just have to first recognize that, 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 that you're in a fight for your life. Literally, you're in a fight for your fucking life if you're depressed. Literally, a fight for your fucking life. And what does it mean? What does it mean? It means that like every single aspect, every single thing surrounding you, the porn, the shitty food, the fucked up girlfriend or boyfriend, the friend that only hurts you instead of giving you positive guidance and love. The family member that, uh, that, 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 I don't, that could have molested you when you were growing up. The person you're pretending to forgive that you haven't really forgiven. All of these are like the, the, the heads on this, the writhing hydra of Mr. Frenchie, Satan, call it what you call it whatever you want, Queenie. Recognize it for what it is, and then when you raise the stakes and work yourself into a uh, uh, um, work yourself into a brave heart style warrior stance, and decide that you want to live, that's when you put up the fucking fight. And, and you'll also find there's another head on Mr. Frenchie. And, and it lives inside of you. It's the puling, mewling, whimpering, simpering, whining, uh, anxiety-ridden part of you that tells you, no, I'm tired. Let's just rest a little longer. Let's just lay down for a little longer. 
Let's just put it off till tomorrow to go to the gym. Let's put it off till tomorrow to go outside and run. Let's put it off till tomorrow to do the push-ups. Let's put it off till tomorrow to tell that fuck face to get the fuck out of our lives. Let's put it off till tomorrow to live. And if you're like me, every time that voice comes into your mind, you'll think, how many fucking tomorrows do I have? How many tomorrows have I put off? You'll find that you'll, you, you're, you're, you're surrounded by stacks of, of tomorrows that have become yesterdays surrounding you like rotting fruit. And you just keep stacking those days onto that pile of rotting fruit as you lay there surrounded by the bloat flies, the demonic forces that whirl around you in the form of unpaid bills, belly fat and bad friends. You gotta wake the fuck up and fight the fight or die or just fucking die. But I would prefer that you stay alive because you listen to this podcast you're a subscriber and I love you and I don't want you to be fucked up. I don't want to be fucked up. A lot of these tirades and rants and didactic indulgences that you might hear are me talking to myself because <laughs> because I've I, I've I, you know, this shit happens to it happens to me. It's a constant battle, you know, but fighting is good. Battles are good. War a just and sacred war is a good thing. This is something that our pe- that peacenik fuck faces will, will, uh, will get in your head, you know. They'll try to teach you that, that, to be a pacifist, which is great. Being a pacifist is fantastic when it, when it, when it, when, when, um, for the right reasons, you know, being a, being a pacifist, being a, a pacifist takes a, a, a form of, uh, raw courage, but don't fool yourself into thinking you're, uh, uh, don't let you, don't, don't trick yourself into thinking that your cowardice is pacifism. It's a big difference. And the fucking war, of course, is not a physical war, generally, though sometimes it is. Rarely, hopefully. Physical violence, no, I don't think it, it works unless you're, in the clutches of a fucking murderer who's about to kill you or your family, then of course you've got to take that son of a bitch out and cut him open, rip his entrails out and hang the bits of his spine around your Texas house. But it is a fucking war. There's no other way to look at it. It's a bloody, brutal fight if you, if you want to get out of the pit that you happen to be in. And, um, and, and you can easily do it right now before you continue to listen to this fucking podcast. It's really simple. You can just press stop right now. Pull on those old fucking gym shorts. Put on those old stinky fucking sneakers. Some gross fucking shirt. Go outside and run around the fucking block. It's as easy as that. That's the first fucking battle. That's the first fight against Mr. Frenchie. Whatever you want to call Satan. And the reaction you'll have will be an immediate sense of like, let's just wait. Let's put it off. Let's put it off. Let's put it off. Let's put it off. Just do it. Just go do it. Just go fucking do it right now. Take the first step in the battle. That's the most important one. And let yourself get angry. These cock-sucking fuck faces will try to teach you that anger is wrong. Anger is good. Righteous anger is a good form of anger. You need it. This is a war for your fucking life. Your head is being held underwater by the forces of entropy. Only it's worse than water. It's some sick, syrupy, sap-like shit that flows out of the cock of Lucifer. And you're in it like a little fucking bug in uh, amber, just floating in there, lost in an entropic world where you can't reach your goals because you feel tired all the fucking time. Easy fix. 
jog around the fucking block. If you can't jog around the block, do some form of physical exercise. If you can't do a physical exercise, chant a fucking mantra. If you can't chant a fucking mantra, chant it in your head. But you've got to work yourself up into a war pitch to begin the initial movements out of the state of victimhood and into the state into, into survivor mode. That wonderful place when you gaze around the battlefield and stare at the desiccated corpses that once had such great power over you. When you get to look out over this battlefield at the at the dismembered beings, metaphorically of course, the metaphorical dismembered beings. You look over there and you see that place where you used to be lazy. You see it, that fat fuck you used to be. Now with a, a nice gash across its head. Being picked apart by the birds of war. And over there you'll see the shitty fucking friend or the awful girlfriend or boyfriend. That constantly rejected you and made you feel like you didn't deserve to be loved. You'll look at them being chewed on by the hyenas, buzzards, metaphorically, of course. And over there is the shit boss that you fucking walked out on one day because you were done with it and you wanted to live. And over there, that's the fucking scary clown that lived outside your building and would scare you at night, climb in your window and dance in front of your bed. If you got a scary clown that lives in front of your building, please send a picture. I'll take care of it for you. You get my point, right? The whole the world will teach you to be fucking the world will try to teach you to disengage from it. People in the world will try to teach you that it's better to disengage from life and walk around with a kind of practiced nonchalance, a kind of uh, too-good-for-the-world swagger. The world will teach you that passion is wrong. The world will teach you to put your career over passion. The world will teach you to put everything over passion. The world will teach you that it's wrong to express love, that it's wrong to express hopefulness, that it's wrong to express happiness, that it's wrong to express joy, that it's wrong to dance and be happy and be in love with life. And that part of the world, the name of that part of the world, is Mr. Frenchie, Lucifer, the ever-present darkness. And what is it trying to do? It's trying to make you sit in a full diaper in the middle of the Garden of Eden. It's trying to make you believe that you don't have control over your internal subjective mind state. It's trying to make you believe that at this very moment, you can't do the pull-up that can bring you out of the emotional tar pit of your life and into one of the most amazing times in human history. The information age, pre-singularity, the point where we're about to merge with the machines, become one consciousness, and perhaps wake up from this simulation, which is so many different names, and remember that we're God. But before we do that, we've got to climb out of our individual shit pits and start being kind to each other. Drop the fucking act. Take the costume off. Stop being a scary clown, scaring people outside their apartments. Become a happy clown. Don't be a clown. Just stop. Don't be clowns. That's over. I'm sorry if you're a clown out there. Kids party clowns are great sometimes. I'm scared by clowns. Let go of the darkness. Embrace the light. Recognize that 
this is a very precious and fragile ecosystem that we're existing in and that there is no longer time to sit on the fence trying to decide between love and greed. There's one obvious fucking choice and it's not greed. It's not the synthetic plastic emptiness that you've been embracing for so long. It's time to go eat real fruit, not the plastic fruit that society always tries to shove down your throat. It's time to eat real food at a real fucking banquet surrounded by real friends, not people who would jettison you in a second if they thought that it could better their position. Don't pretend. Put Just take that book. If you've been reading the fucking laws of power, t take that fucking book and burn it. Get rid of that bullshit. Fuck all that shit. All the navigating, all the pretending that it's okay to climb on the backs of your brothers and sisters to get to some better fucking place. For, just drop it all, man. Let it go. Burn it. Throw it in a fucking garbage pile. Burn it up. Be human. It's time to be human again. You know who you are. You know exactly who you are. And drop the guilt. You don't have to feel bad because you've been acting like that. We all got tricked into believing that that's the way to be. We got tricked by fucking dumbasses. Dumbasses are always the ones who climb to the positions of power and convince everybody that the way to be is to be covered in fucking gems and jewels and synthetic status symbol crap. These people have been distracting humanity forever. All right, that's my little fucking, that's my little speech. God damn, that was 27 minutes.